Before we get started with today's video, I want to compare some analytics from the state of California to some of the states that Californians move to. A lot of Californians move to Tennessee thinking that they would end up in a better state. The homicide rate in Tennessee is about two times higher than California. The firearm mortality rate is more than two times higher. The drug overdose death rate in Tennessee is more than two times higher than California. The teenage pregnancy rate in Tennessee is more than two times higher than California. So we can see how people who moved from California to Tennessee could easily have some regrets. Many Californians left behind great jobs in California to move to the state of Florida only to watch their incomes reduce significantly. When you factor in the cost of living and homeownership expenses, Florida is actually becoming just about as expensive as California these days. The highest insurance rates in the country, hurricanes coming through, people are seeing their homeowner's insurance increase and their property taxes as well. In Florida, they found higher overdose death rates, higher firearm mortality rates, and of course, a higher murder rate. Those who chose the state of Alabama found out that they were two and a half times more likely to get murdered they were almost three times more likely to die by firearm and they also found that the drug overdose death rate in Alabama is significantly higher than California. In fact, the homicide rate for the entire state of Alabama with all its 5 million people is on par with the worst cities in California like San Bernardino and Oakland. Just let that sink in. You could be standing anywhere in the state of Alabama, most of it's rural, and you are as likely to get murdered as you are in Oakland, California. People left California and moved to rural communities in Alabama that are more likely to get you murdered than in Oakland, one of the most notorious cities in the state of California and the most dangerous city on the entire West Coast. So if that's not a freaking eye-opening experience for these Californians, I don't know what will. The worst part is that they were being lied to. They were being told that California was bad and dangerous and that they needed to move to the south where it was safer. To their disappointment, now after many years, they're finding out that the complete opposite is the truth. And they're moving back to California. And that is the topic of today's video. In the state of California, you still have cattle ranches directly on the beaches. Meanwhile, in the state of Florida, cookie cutter type developments and idiots with freaking loud motorcycles like we hear in the background now, have pretty much destroyed the beautiful scenic coastline of Florida. Where once the old Florida stood, today it's being wiped away by development. But when you look at the state of California, they still have cattle ranches directly on the coastline. They haven't allowed the state of California to be destroyed. Ironically, the complete opposite was told to people in California. They were told that their state was being destroyed, when in reality, it is one of the best preserved states in the country, with some of the most beautiful natural settings. What's taking place in the state of Florida right now with developers it's pretty much the annihilation of old Florida and anything to do with nature or even agriculture is being completely wiped away from the surface of the land. We're living in an ever polarizing world and if you're moving across the United States some of the information that you are getting from sources may actually be more along the lines of disguised political propaganda and not actual analytical information. The real reasons people are moving the grass really isn't greener on the other side. An article published by businessinsider.com relates a story of a person from California who lived in Sarasota, Florida. That's about where I live in the state of Florida. And he is moving back to California, stating a few reasons like weather and just not liking the people here too much. How everything in Florida has become political. How the state has become hostile needlessly to outsiders which has reduced business. Low wages continue to be a huge concern with the state of Florida. Business Insider says that 51,000 formal Californians 
Moved to Florida between 21 and 22. Over 28,500 made the move from Florida to California. And that's a very considerable amount of people moving the other way. And I can guarantee you with the implication of SB 1718, that number for 2023 will be much higher in the other direction. Others who are legal just find that the state's becoming very hostile to immigrants in general, even if they are U.S. citizens. They don't want to deal with the stupidity that's coming out of the state of Florida. With the increase in property taxes and homeowners insurance, Living in Florida has become almost as expensive as living in California without the many advantages like the natural beauty and, of course, better paying jobs in California, less political rhetoric in the state, which means people can live in that state without constantly being bombarded by propaganda. So what we can learn from this situation is that a lot of people made a lot of mistakes and now they're starting to realize that they bought into something that really wasn't accurate. They believed everything they were being told. Before I went to California and saw it for myself, I used to be one of those people that made California the pun of all my jokes. But in reality, now that I went to California and saw it for myself, I spent some time over there, I started to realize how wrong I was for thinking that way. And unfortunately, a lot of people today are still repeating that rhetoric without understanding one where it's coming from and why the answer to the where we all know but the why is a little bit more disturbing the reason that people really hate california is just because it's a powerhouse for hispanic and asian business none of the people that left the state of california complained about having any issues selling their houses the why they left many times wasn't political the vast majority of people who left california left because their homes had appreciated so much in value, they can move to another state, buy a bigger house, and still have hundreds of thousands of dollars left over because that's how much their properties in California had appreciated. And the cost of living in California was more comprehensive for somebody making high incomes and not for somebody in retirement because the state had become very expensive. It's an expensive state to do business. So a lot of people portrayed this move as being for political reasons. They're fleeing California. But in reality, the reason they left California is because they were going to get a bigger house, have a bunch of money left over, pay less taxes, because California had become an extremely expensive state to do business in, which is typical, by the way, for minority communities. Any minority community becomes more expensive to do business in. Throughout the entire United States, when you're in a place that less than 5% of the population is foreign born, it's cheap to do business. But when you enter a place that's over 30% minorities, it becomes extraordinarily expensive to do business. And it's not happening on the people's end. It's the U.S. government's way of taxing minorities more than native born Americans. And that's not a secret. It happens uniformly throughout the entire country, regardless of the state's politics. The problem has been that over the last 20 years, minority communities have actually been more productive and have appreciated more than native communities despite the strict cost of doing business because they're just harder working people. They have more willpower and it's a system that's actually backfired because it's created real estate appreciation in communities that are majority immigrants. In regions of the country that have stagnant populations of native-born population have become, well, economically stagnant with no growth. Maybe 15 or 20 years ago, those communities may have had better analytics for income and for crime, but that's flip-flopped. And now it's cities that are having the lowest analytics for crime, the higher real estate values, and people from small towns are having to commute to big cities. It's all flip-flopped around, but some people have not really caught up with the times. They're still living in a bubble of information from 20 years ago, and they're not up to date with the economy. Clearly, these expensive places like South Florida and California are simply not conductive for retirement. So it only makes sense that people that are looking for retirement are going to start to look for more affordable options. And while criticizing California, the state of Florida has slowly become just as expensive as California, ironically. 
the same people in Florida who are complaining of out of control growth and development are the same people who are not interested in any type of ecological regulations or development restrictions. Increasingly in the South, people care more about the interests of big corporations than they do of other human beings. I live in Lakewood Ranch, Florida, and anytime I tell people I live in Lakewood Ranch, the first thing that comes out of their mouth is, that used to be all cattle, so there used to be cows over there. In Central California, the most beautiful scenery in America, they still have ranch land that comes right up to the beach along some of the most beautiful natural settings in the country. Certainly, if California allowed developers to move in, this entire part of California would be nothing but new home construction and high-rise buildings like they've done along the Florida coast. But the state of California hasn't allowed developers to do whatever they want in that state. While in Florida, in Manatee County where I live, they're currently getting rid of the 50-foot mangrove buffer zone to build houses, more houses near the beach on the same plot of land, which means that now if there's ever a hurricane, which there will be eventually, those houses are most likely going to get washed away and anything behind them as well. Because state of Florida doesn't have any state income tax, they haven't been able to build any type of infrastructure. Cities like Cape Coral, areas like the Golden Gate Estates, which by now any other city that big or urban area that big would have a loop highway to ease traffic in the vicinity of the city. None of that's taking place because the state doesn't have funding for those types of projects. States that don't have state income tax like Washington and Florida end up in a situation where you're paying for tolls or ferries left and right to get from point A to point B. Tampa, Orlando, Lakeland, fast-growing metropolitan areas with huge traffic congestion have roads like tolls that are completely vacant because simply people can't afford to use them. So even though the infrastructure is in theory in place, people simply cannot afford to use it which leads to some of the most massive congestion anywhere in America. I mean, the I-4 corridor from Tampa to Orlando is just as bad as Los Angeles. Even though you're dealing with a metropolitan area that is a fraction of the size of Los Angeles, you still have about the same traffic congestion. Northeast Miami, Northwest Miami, Northern Dade County, just as bad as anything in Los Angeles, surprisingly. It's a much smaller metropolitan area, especially in the wintertime. So people are starting to realize that you have the same traffic congestion, you have horrendous weather, you have natural disasters, but you don't have the high paying jobs, you don't have access to public services. Let's not even get started on how bad healthcare is in a state like Florida. Surprisingly, whether you wanna believe it or not, because again, we're going back to the rhetoric that people believe even though it's not factual, Florida does have a higher crime rate than California. It's got a higher murder rate. That's the one analytic you cannot really easily deceive people with. That's one analytic that's very reliable. Florida's murder rate, it's not much higher than California. It's almost insignificant. But consistently, year after year, Florida and California's murder rates, for well over a decade now, year after year, Florida has had a murder rate that's higher than California. Not by much, let me mention. It's insignificant, but it has been there very consistently above California. And it almost seems like these states being on opposite sides of the country, their crime rates actually correlate pretty well, which means it's not a red state or a blue state issue like many people say. It's a national trend issue. If you compare Florida's murder rate to California's rate over the last decade, you'll clearly see how these two states' murder rates correlate perfectly. It literally has nothing to do with the state's politics. It has everything to do with national trends because they've correlated and they're on completely opposite sides of the country, not geographically affected, which is interesting because if you look at the rest of the South, it has a lot higher murder rates than the state of Florida. But that's all about to change because Florida recently changed its gun laws. Florida is becoming more like Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia. Why on earth would you mirror your gun laws on states that have the highest murder rates 
and the highest gun fatality rates in the country, we're starting to see how these laws are getting both civilians and people in law enforcement hurt needlessly. They're afraid to speak up on the subject because they don't want to be mislabeled because as we know, these are bully people. They bully people and then safety is a whole nother question. I mean, the analytics for Hispanics, it's absolutely abysmal. You might have a city that for whites is extraordinarily safe, but then you look at analytics for blacks or Hispanics in that city, and you're actually more likely to be murdered, let's say, in those cities as a Hispanic than you were back in your home country, which is even more dangerous than the United States in general. So again, those analytics don't really play out evenly for everybody in society. That's why a lot of Hispanics are starting to stay in Mexico and not make it to the United States. Mexico has been more welcoming to immigrants than the United States. And now immigrants from Haiti, Cuba, Colombia, Uruguay, instead of going into the United States illegally, they're finding that if they stay in Mexico, they can have a better, easy opportunity to integrate themselves into that society, not only legally, economically, but also more important, socially. They feel welcomed in Mexico. Mexicans know what it's like to be an immigrant. Of course, the laws in Mexico, there's individuals, of course, like anywhere who don't like it. Mexico has the same problem that the United States has. There's people in Mexico that don't like immigrants, but overall, most Mexicans understand what it's like to be treated as an immigrant. Therefore, they're a welcoming country with a strong economy. The United States is on par with Mexico and Brazil when you look at analytics like murder. And there's more weapons in the United States, which means even people leaving dangerous countries like Honduras and Salvador are not going to move to a city like St. Louis or Detroit. When an immigrant crosses from Dominican Republic to Mexico, their safety analytics could be better or it could be about the same. But if they were to cross into the United States and end up in a place like Detroit, St. Louis, Cincinnati, Indianapolis, the list goes on and on, based on their race, their chances of being murdered are actually higher than in their home country. To most people immigrating, safety is more important than economical outlook which means that they'll, re they'll willingly stay in Mexico, even though they're gonna make less than the United States, but they'll find lots of safety. Secretly and quietly, a lot of immigrant communities are staying in Mexico, and Mexico's becoming a powerhouse of international immigration. And Mexico plays both sides. They play with the Americans and they play with the Chinese, which means that their economical future isn't being tied down by some type of political affiliation. They're playing both sides of that. And again, what made these American communities be successful, the growth, didn't come from the stagnant native populations. It came from the influx of immigrants, which means that those communities that are starting up in Mexico now with ties to Haiti, Dominican Republic, South America, have the potential for a lot of economical growth, which can make Mexico a much bigger player in the future. All the while, most of the issues that we're seeing along the U.S.-Mexico border are happening in the eastern side of Texas. Rarely do you hear about California or New Mexico having problems at the border crap. On the Mexican border, you have San Diego, California, the safest city in America. Chula Vista, one of the safest cities in America. You don't hear about problems on the California border Despite the state of Texas making bold claims about how well their efforts are and how horrible California is doing, in reality, it's Texas that's got a problem, and it has nothing to do with politics. Again, it has to do with geography. The border is in the west, and most of the product is going to the east, which means that undoubtedly eastern Texas is going to have the brunt of the trafficking by geographical demand has nothing to do with politics. And you got people spreading the misconception that there isn't enough security on the border. Anybody who's lived 100 miles from the U.S. border can laugh at that because this is the strictest region of the country of the most surveillance, the most law enforcement agencies, and the safest cities in the entire country are all packed along the U.S.-Mexico border. Laredo, 
McAllen, El Paso, Texas, San Diego, California, Phoenix, Arizona, all of the safest cities in the country by murder rate or along the U.S.-Mexico border. Ironically, all the most dangerous cities in the state of Mexico, the entire state of Tamaulipas, all of uh, Tijuana, Ciudad Juarez, the most dangerous cities in Mexico, are all along the U.S.-Mexico border. Ironically, Detroit is a m massive border city in the United States, and it has some of the highest murder rates in the United States. And on the other side, you have Toronto, as we know, one of the safest cities in the world. So you start to see that geographical barriers are analytically a better explanation for high crime rates than politics. It simply isn't accurate. Anybody who studied geography and who studied social studies understands the correlation. Where are the highest overdose rates in the United States? Along Appalachia. Now, of course, all of the fastest growing cities are along what's known as the Sun Belt. And I say all that to say that California, because of its immigrant population, its relaxed view on immigration, and not only that, California's, even if you say, when you say relaxed view on immigration, you're talking about the fact that California, for example, the immigrant population in California has a smaller percentage of that population being illegal than a state like Alabama or Arkansas. Alabama and Arkansas's Latino population has a higher percentage of illegals and uneducated workers. While when you look at California, for example, a smaller percentage of their Latino population is illegal. So when you say a relaxed view on immigration, you have to make the distinction between immigration that's legal and immigration that's illegal. Even though you don't hear Californians saying things like, for example, we only want the legal immigration. It's always the states and regions that have the highest percentage of their Latino communities that are illegal that'll say things like, we only want you if you're legal. Of course, we know that's garbage because states like California who don't make those types of statements have a larger percentage of their Latino populations being legal. And of course, not only has California attracted a larger percentage of legal Hispanics and Asians, but they're also higher income earning. They're more educated. Now, California, on the other hand, cannot brag about the same thing for blacks. California actually has worse analytics for African Americans than it does with compared to states in the South. And that's pretty embarrassing. States like Washington, on the other hand, are going to be great states for blacks, but horrible states for Hispanics. A Hispanic in Washington is going to make 66 cents on the dollar compared to a white, which is actually one of the lowest worst in the country. So whatever Arkansas and Alabama are doing to Hispanics is also happening in a negative way in a state like Washington, which is also liberal, more than California. For example, the state of Washington even goes as far as issuing licenses to people who are illegal in the country so they can drive. However, despite the fact they do that for them, Hispanics in that state have some of the worst incomes compared to whites as anywhere in the country. So while they're giving you a legal avenue to create income, you're never treated the same in the labor force. And that is something that a lot of times people don't realize about states like New York, Washington, and California. They portray themselves as being great places for minorities. But when you look at the income analytics, it can't be proven. So on today's video, we've dispelled a lot of myths and understandings that were inaccurate about how some of these things work. You just have to find the place that works best for you. You study some analytics, first of all from different sources, and you start to understand what place is better for you. And it's not based on your political views. It should be based just on raw analytics. As I am looking for retirement, what states are best for retirement? If I'm a minority, I'm struggling with income inequality, what states offer my particular demographic? Because that can vary from place to place. A place could have great analytics for blacks and be horrible for Asians or Hispanics, for example. So start making those moving decisions based on what your family needs the best and don't let political parties influence you to move from point A to point B. All they're really trying to do is flip purple states into red states 
And that's why they're trying to get all these Republicans to move to Florida because they're trying to flip the state's politics. That's why they're running Disney out of Florida because they don't want young people in Florida. That's why the schools suck in Florida. They don't care about the schools in Florida. They want the schools to be bad because the schools attract young people and young people don't vote for them. We are stuck in a polarizing political world. We don't have a choice. We're in this, there's nowhere to run. But just make your decisions based on what's best for your family and try to make sure that the information that you're getting isn't based off of political propaganda and it's more based off of real analytics. I personally find that murder rates and income information broken down by race as well as incarceration rates are a great place to start because those are analytics that can't be manipulated. There's other analytics that are definitely being manipulated or they're being presented in a way that portrays something in a certain light, but there's a whole bigger picture missing. I have found that in my studies of analytics, I have tried to look for specific metrics that are very insightful and that are very hard to distort to portray a specific narrative, seeing right through all the garbage to what the real analytics say. What are these analytics really saying to me? What's really happening? And I, and I let the analytics tell me the information. I don't try to preconceive a notion. All right, guys, thank you for watching today's video.